Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Pure age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this podcast, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland, Disneyland history, and more with mementos, snapshots, souvenirs, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. Let's start by thanking my patrons from Patreon.com. You can join in at any level to support the show and receive snail mail from my trips to Disneyland and from my desk, plus some sneak peeks and bonus content. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the rest of the e-ticket patrons, to Nia, Eric Daniels, Monica Seats Vega, Scott Cagle, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons Serious Inquiries Only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Angela Reynolds, Grace Coat, Patty Wollen, and Ben and Noel Bruning. B ticket patron Joshua Bell, and to the A ticket patrons Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Angel Nablock, and the Beyond the Railroad podcast. I am your host, your post host, Clocky. And today, we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has Town Square, looking down Main Street, USA. You can see the band playing music around the flagpole, the top of the Matterhorn peeking over the Main Street buildings, and if you look closely, the Hills Brothers Coffee House, just to the right of the old Willitzer Music Hall. On the back it reads, Town Square, Disneyland, USA. Happy memories of days gone by may be relived in Disneyland's Town Square, where guests may answer a fire alarm or enjoy a ride on a horse-drawn streetcar as the Disneyland band gathers around the flagpole. It's postmarked February 3rd, 1966, with a Los Angeles Build Your Future Wisely, Safely, U.S. Savings Bond Cancel, and a six-cent red Theodore Roosevelt postage stamp, Scott number 1039. I assume they visit the park on Saturday, January 29th, 1966, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The weather was a high of 65 and a low of 39. Park attendance that day was 17,065. It's addressed to Miss Florence Zerby of Canton, Ohio. It reads, Dear Florence, we had a ride on this horse-drawn streetcar while at Disneyland last week. Marguerite did all the driving and became very tired. In fact, we all did, but we enjoyed it. Love from both, and H. I chose this 1966 Disneyland postcard to talk about the Mint Juleps, a New Orleans Square staple and sold from a small window starting in 1966. Mint Juleps had been available in the parks before on the second deck of the Mark Twain. Because of the history of Mint Juleps, it made a great addition to the drink options in New Orleans Square. The first written mention of a julep was in the 1770s. The word julep has Spanish, Spanish Arabic, and Persian roots, and translates to rose water. In 1784, a medical note, a doctor prescribed a mint julep along with some other treatments for their patient's ill condition. Some historians say that mint julep started out as a remedy on farms for minor aches and pains. Chris Morris, a master distiller at Woodford Reserve, explained the basic ingredients in a food and wine article, quote, bourbon to soothe your aches and pains, sugar to give you some energy, and mint to help open the eyes. This is also confirmed in an 1803 book published in England describing mint juleps as a drink taken in the morning by Virginians, made with a dram of spiritus liquor and steeped with mint. The author continued, explaining that the drink was how he obtained his love for whiskey. The basic recipe for a mint julep is two ounces of bourbon whiskey, four mint sprigs, one teaspoon of powdered sugar, and two teaspoons of water, made by muddling the mint, sugar, and water in a stainless steel cup then filling the cup with cracked ice and bourbon stirred until the cup frosts. The mint julep is also the official drink of the Kentucky Derby. A mint julep in Disneyland is non-alcoholic and can be enjoyed by everyone. A recipe to make the Disneyland version at home includes the following ingredients. Sugar, water, creme de menthe syrup, frozen lemonade concentrate, frozen limeade concentrate, and green food dye for color. This can also be garnished with lemon wedges, mint sprigs, and or maraschino cherries. I'll put links in the episode description if you want to try to bring a little bit of New Orleans Square to your home or your next party. Looking at some vintage maps, the Mint Julep Bar sold mint juleps, lemonade, and ice cream in the late 60s, but by the mid-70s had added cho fritters to the menu. Currently at the park, the Mint Juleps menu includes mint juleps, sometimes a seasonal flavored julep, classic and seasonally flavored Mickey Mouse shaped beignets, coffee, soda, and other drinks. Recently, 
You could even get a souvenir mint julep tin cup to enjoy your cold beverage. Other places in the park that offer a mint julep are Cafe Orleans for a non-alcoholic version or a classic bourbon version, the Blue Bayou Restaurant, which offers a 31 Royal Street signature julep, and the Magic Key Terrace in Disney California Adventure. Add some flair to your mail by checking out stamps at Enfield Post. You can explore different stamp options on our Etsy site, grab some great deals by following EP Sunday Sales on Instagram, or create something special and have her design a stamp array for your invitation or celebration. You can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage postage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D-P-O-S-T on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. The front of our next postcard has Monorail Red cruising over the Submarine Lagoon waterfalls. It's framed by another section of the monorail track, and if you look closely, you can see some streetlights for Autopia. On the back it reads, America's first daily operating monorail trains transport passengers over a concrete highway in the sky between Disneyland and the Disneyland Hotel on the Disneyland Allwig monorail system. It's postmarked April 2nd, 1966, with a Long Beach National Children's Dental Health Week cancel and a five-cent gray George Washington postage stamp, Scott number 1213. I assume they visit the park on Wednesday, February 2nd, 1966, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The weather was a high of 67 and a low of 44, with 0.12 inches of precipitation. Park attendance that day was 7,174. It's addressed to Barbara St. John of Seattle, Washington. It reads, Hi Barbara, you don't know me, but your name was on a letter I got, and it told me to send you a postcard. I live in Long Beach, and I'm 15. I go to Long Beach Polytechnic High School, and I used to live in Seattle. Ick. Gotta go. Hope you get lots of postcards. Patsy. While looking through my 1966 postcards, I found this one. Patsy's description of getting Barbara's address in a letter reminds me of Post Crossing. Since World Post Crossing Day is coming up on October 1st, I thought this postcard would be a good reason to talk about Post Crossing. Post Crossing launched in 2005 after Paulo, a student in Portugal who was a snail mail enthusiast, wanted to connect people with the same interest in getting postcards in the mail. With some help from his friends, the Post Crossing project launched on July 14, 2005. Its goal to connect people across the world through postcards, independently of their country, age, gender, race, or beliefs. I was writing post-crossing postcards a few weeks ago in the Golden Horseshoe when a tour guide cast member asked me what I was working on. The post-crossing website explains post-crossing like this. The goal of this project is to allow everyone to send and receive postcards from all over the world. The idea is simple. For each postcard you send, you will receive one back from a random post-crosser from somewhere in the world. The steps for post-crossing are simple. Request an address from the website. Pick a postcard based on either what you have or the preferences of the person you've been assigned. Write something nice, or there may be some topics included in the recipient's profile. Add stamps and the post-crossing ID number attached to this postcard and send it. Once the postcard makes it to its intended mailbox, the person will use the post-crossing ID to register it to the website and send a digital note back and you'll be able to request a new name and address to send another postcard. For every postcard you send, someone else, anyone participating in postcrossing, not necessarily someone you have sent a postcard to, will send you a postcard, which you will then register and send a digital thank you. Depending on how many postcards you've sent and received, you're able to send more and more postcards. I've been sending out postcrossing postcards for over four years and have sent over 375. Some from home, some from Disneyland, and some while I've been in other locations around the U.S. My incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is a craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern or 6 Pacific. Art Throwdown is a wonderful community of artists who love to share their craft, from creating sticker postcards and coloring techniques to intricate paper cutting and unique crafting. It's always a treat to watch a show and occasionally get some one-of-a-kind postcards from the group. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard has a picture of the Tower Bridge in London. It's postmarked September 16, 
2024 with the San Francisco Thinking of You Cancel and a 37 cent spay and neuter puppy postage stamp and a 20 cent credit union act of 1934 postage stamp Scott numbers 3671 and 2075 respectively it reads 9-15-24. Hi, Clocky. I hope you are doing well. Congrats on the continued success of your podcast. This is the Tower Bridge from my London slash Paris landmark set. We had a wonderful trip. Have an excellent week, Jim. Thank you so much for the postcard, Jim. Also, thanks for the kind words and stamps. It's always fun to pull out my Scott 2018 U.S. pocket stamp catalog to find the Scott numbers for the unique stamps that you and some other friends send with your mail. It's always great to look back at the recent history of stamps. Jim is also responsible for getting me into post-crossing, and I randomly pulled his name once to send a postcard. Of all the post-crossing postcards I've sent, I've known two of the recipients before drawing their names, and had met one, Jim, in person. Thanks for listening to Set from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sentfromdisneyland. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at sentfromdisneyland or my website, sentfromdisneyland.com. For questions and comments, send me a postcard addressed to Sent From Disneyland, P.O. Box 44, Hood, California, 95639. This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney-related properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to the host and guests of the Set from Disneyland podcast. This podcast is produced and edited by Clocky McDowell, website designed by Misty McDowell, theme song was written and performed by Noah Sunday Lefkowitz. Take it away, Noah.